we're hearing a lot too about this social aspect. So what better person to have come to the stage now than Graham Marshall? Graham is an urban planner by trade and he's worked with several leading London design practices and in fact he created the prize-winning Liverpool City Centre Strategic Regeneration Framework which he also delivered to great acclaim and currently he is running the Pro Social Place programme along with Rhiannon Corcoran um, at the, with the Liverpool and Middlesex universities and this is a really really interesting uh, project organization and let's have him talk about the ideas behind it. Welcome Graham. Right, I'd better not disappoint then. Um, if I add to that introduction, I will introduce myself as a reformed urban designer and what I'd like to do is run through what we call a uh, massive small project brought about that cathartic uh, change. Um, if I say anything else tonight, one thing I want you to go away and think about is that we need to stop talking about the built environment. We need to start talking about the living environment. So hopefully if you can all go away and tweet and do things about that in 12 months' time, we should never hear the word built environment talked about again, because that's about inanimate bricks and mortar. We need to talk about people and cities. So I can either go now or carry on and show you the project. And I guess you've all come a long way, so I'll carry on with the project. Um, this is Bakewell in Derbyshire. It's a small, ordinary little town, a heritage town. But uh, as Wendy said earlier, these things can be scaled up and, and scaled down. It's all about people. And we have uh, common, common needs in here. Now, the buildings that you can see on here, most of the new ones in there, are a piece of townscape that replaced a, a cattle market that moved over the river, and this is the centre of this, of this town. And what we were commissioned for, uh, £5,000 was a very small fee, but they just wanted uh, a sense, a strategy, of a public realm strategy. And I had the impression that they were looking for a palette of materials and some insight into how they're going to win Derbyshire and Bloom the following year. So flower baskets and that sort of thing is the expectation. But when we went out and looked at the town uh, on our own before we started doing any work, um, there, are, there are three or four really key things that we noticed. The first thing is all the new buildings and a lot of the new spaces. There is no frontage. If you look on there, there are no windows and no doors on the ground floors. Building top right, really awful. There is, there's there's no overlooking. It's uh, I, I don't know what kind of a, a, um, environment we're thinking of building here. But if you then look at the spaces that are in there, they're all covered in cars. They're all car parks. Great revenue for the local authority. And also, if you look at the streets, a very small town. But bottom left, you can't move across. It's all about the cars. Um, the two other bottom ones. That's a gyratory going around the town centre. So they're not two-way roads, but they're, they're, they're double lanes, and the whole thing is choked. So my conclusion after the first couple of hours walking around the town, I, I knew it fairly well anyway, is that there is no public realm. So how on earth can you do a public realm strategy when a town doesn't actually have a public realm? There's, there's just traffic spaces there. So we started our research, and the first thing I found out about Bakewell is that um, when the Danes took over the country, there were many different tribes. They spent most of the time uh, fighting with each other. The Celts were pushed somewhere to the west. And then the Vikings came in from the north and there was a bit more squabbling going on. So Edward the Elder called a grand gathering and it happened to be in Bakewell. That was in the centre of the country, close to where all the roads across the Peak District. And the purpose of that gathering was to call a truce. And from that truce, that was the beginnings of England, the first English, that's the first conception of England as one place. Uh, and shortly after that, his son became the first king of England. But the important thing about it was, and it's about a thousand years ago, is that there was a change in the country as well. We became urban. We started to talk about towns. We had just this defense built around urban places, and that's what the focus was. But it wasn't about architecture. It was about people. People came and built castles and houses and things there, but it was about people. It was about the system. 
downside of that is the, Vic uh, the, uh, the Normans thought it was a fantastic idea, and they came over and took it all over, and it was able to sweep through the country very, very quickly and carry on running that system. So um, there was a slight issue there. We came and had a look uh, at the town from a different perspective then. We pulled together a series of uh, what we call community leaders, a series of workshops. And in that workshop, we took the Edward de Bono six hats approach. Uh, if you don't know what that is, you need to Google it, it's dead easy. But it's a different way of talking to people. And this first set of postings here uh, were about what do we know about this place and what do we feel about this place. And the post-its, we had hundreds of them, but they kind of assembled themselves into this order. And you can see in the center, I've followed it around because that's uh, a bit um, heritage and civic. It was all about the place. The place was very important. Bakewell was very important because it was special. And they also felt the green ones that in the surrounding area there was an awful lot of assets around Bakewell. They were not being particularly well used but they were very excited about the assets that they had. But everything that they complained about, the red ones, were actually about stewardship if you look at them. And that's how that stuff to assemble itself. But I can't read the yellow ones from here, but the top one talks about livability. That must have been an urban planner uh, at, the, at the event, because nobody else uses that word. But they felt that you couldn't find your way around the place, and that's probably enough to do with traffic. And the bottom one, uh, I can't even read that. Economic concerns, they had a great deal of economic concerns about where it was, but they didn't understand what this was about, because they had a fantastic new town centre development, and if they could only get some nice flowers and a public realm scheme together, it would all be fixed. But we kept the conversation going, and the following week, ten days later, I had another meeting, I brought the post-it notes with me, we went back to them again, and this time we asked, what could this place be? What, what should we be doing here? And again, you can see, it's a principal market town, capital of the people. Very important place. Um, the assets were quite important again. But there was a, there was a shift. There was a shift in the, in the discussion. And that shift was a realization of what was and wasn't working. And it started to shift back towards the public realm. It had just been about the built environment then. We started to realize that the assets, the living thing, was actually what the place was about. Now, for some reason, there's a white line going through that photograph over there. That should be a really strong broken line going all the way through the thing. And it should... Oh, we've lost the black background over here. That's what's happening. So, um, we start to talk about what is the tipping point. And that is where, where is the balance? What do we need to fix to make this thing better? And that began a uh, conversation. Now, our post-rationalization of that is to start to think about this place, or think about space in terms of antisocial and social and pro-social. And up until that time, I was a good urban designer and I did lots of cafe type things like that in corners and I worked out all the legibility and everything else. But all that I was doing, along with all my comrades in urban design, uh, was creating social places. And there's so many times I've been to a place and I can see the problem is poor stewardship. I've worked on really good schemes and gone back 10 years later and it's gone down the pan. Stewardship. So if you just produce social places, social structure, and you've got no control over that stewardship, there's always a chance of it becoming adrift, becoming undone. But the trouble is with things that spiral downwards, they spiral downwards quite quickly and they're hard to reverse. What we need to be thinking about and what this project started to teach me is we need pro-social places, we need to build on those things that make people excited. So a third meeting was another shift, and this is a really big and important shift. If we look at the rocks up there. We still have the brown heritage colour, but that is no longer about the built environment. It's no longer about the bake well. That's about the community. That's about stewardship. And by having these series of meetings, it made a shift in that community. They started to take a bit more responsibility for their place. They felt that they had some control and they could change things. The place dropped down to the other things. Uh, if we look at the public realm and reduce the traffic, that's about stewardship capitalizing heritage. But the place also went from built environment, buildings, to the spaces between buildings. There was a shift there as well. The central focus was about public spaces. And the outcome of this, they got a bit of a public realm strategy, but what they really got out of this was a town team 
that was the outcome of this project was a town team, and that town team went on to put together and able to plan and do uh, community projects as well. And in conclusion, and I'll need to check my notes to make sure that I don't leave anything out of here, um, a key thing here was we had a really good client and let me have my head, but since it was such a small project, a short time frame, it's a bit hard to slow me down anyway. So we got to do this kind of thinking. The client was uh, very open and very interested. Um, the other interesting thing that we noticed that we learned from it, and the thing is, I've got it in my head now, so it's just how I think of what I do, but at the time, it was, it was new learning, we were struggling with this. But we realized that that new town center development had actually unplaced that town. So the poor stewardship had displaced the community, and that too, in important terms, uh, place. We also learned that ordinary citizens actually understand what it is, but they know what it is, but they're not allowed to talk about it. It's not a forum to come together and discuss it week after week and take it forward. They don't think they can do anything about it, so they just put up with poor traffic and say, well, nothing can be done, they might complain sometime, and they're convinced that nothing can be done about these things. Um, so there is an expertise in the community that needs to be harnessed. And that's difficult, we don't know how to do it. But there is an expertise in urban design that's absolutely essential as well. The community can't do it uh, with, without that. And the thing, the ingredient, the important ingredient in between that that holds the whole thing together is policy. We don't have good enough policy in this country, good enough urban policy. And what we need to be doing now is not um, well designing places, all government policy and planning is talking about things being well designed. We want well designed. We want to talk about things like rival as opposed to survival. That's my thinking.